What's up Airsofters, my name is Lane and welcome to the BB Warrior. In today's video we're going to be going over the bare necessities that you need to have for your first Milsim event and answering some of the most frequently asked questions that I get from players who are interested in traveling to a Milsim event. Now the first thing that I want to say is that this will be a little bit longer video than others so if you want to, timestamps will be down in the description below, but at the same time I'm not going to be boring you guys by saying the obvious things. You're going to need an AEG or a gas blowback or any sort of primary rifle, you're going to need eye protection what today's video is concerned about is the things that you're going to need that you typically don't need to prepare for when going to an open play style of game. So the first thing that we're going to discuss is magazines. Now at most Milsim events you are required to use mid cap magazines. The only exception is with a white machine gun which will allow you to use a box magazine. However for riflemen you have to use mid caps. So how many should you carry? Now for me personally I like to carry 4 plus 1 in the gun. So I carry PTS EPMs, which have a capacity of 150 BBs. So I carry three on my chest rig, one on my belt for a quick reload, and then one in the gun, obviously. This is more than enough for myself, however, if you're the type of person that likes to shoot very often, you may want to consider bringing more magazines. However, I should say that some events have a capacity of how many mid-caps you can carry, typically about 7 or 8. Now, while I do have these 5 magazines ready, if I feel like I'm going to need more, what I will do is throw another 2-3 to three again if there's no limit on how many I can carry in my assault pack, so that if either I need more magazines if we're out there for an extended period of time, or my squad mates need more magazines, I have the ability to, you know, have them reach in the back and grab it, or I can grab it for myself if I take off my assault pack, so that I have more ammo. At most casual Milsim events, you will probably be heading back to the dead box often enough, or the respawn I should say, often enough that you can refill these, so I would definitely recommend picking up something like an Odin Innovation Speedwater, so that you can load your magazines and get back into the fight as soon as possible. However, truthfully, you don't need too many mid caps. It's kind of just, you know, finding the right balance for yourself. Now, moving into that is your load bearing equipment. I have a lot of people that ask me, well, hey, Lane, you know, should I be wearing a plate carrier? Should I be wearing a chest rig? What sort of load bearing equipment should I be wearing? And truthfully, it is a personal preference type thing because most events don't really penalize or reward you for wearing a plate carrier or a chest rig. However, my general rule of thumb is only carry what you are directly going to need. So that is smoke grenades, some general purpose items such as snacks. I say snacks, not MREs. You're not going to be pairing an MRE in the middle of a Milsim event, or at least at most of them. Water, auxiliary items such as, you know, frag grenades, smoke grenades, pistol magazines, and that is really everything that you are going to need unless you're filling a specialty roll like 40mm or again LMG where you're running box mags. That is all that you truthfully need. You should be aiming to make your kit as lightweight as possible while carrying everything you need. That is why I personally use the Spirit of Systems chest rig. It is a very small chest rig, but it holds everything that I need. Personally, I've always been a big fan of carrying as little as you need on the airsofting field. My mod has always been light is right. Now I do want to say there are going to be some items that you need to bring out with you that you don't necessarily need to be carrying everywhere that you go. Rain equipment is a good example of this. At most events, again, you're going to be heading back to the respawn very frequently. So, you know, if it starts to rain, it, you know, when you die, run back and go grab your rain jacket. So definitely check the forecast ahead of time to make sure that you carry the proper, you know, equipment and gear that you're going to need for inclement weather, such as a rain jacket, you know, a cover for your backpack. But what I like to do is have my chest rig, my assault pack if I feel the necessity for one, and then I'll keep what I like to call a fob bag back at the respawn. Now this is um, a larger style assault pack, but not quite a ruck, and this holds everything that I'm going to need, but I don't need to carry on the field. So this is replacement magazines, you know, if I just want to have some in case my mid caps break, extra smoke grenades, extra frags, extra food, water, rain equipment, things like that. So stuff that I'm probably going to need at some point, but I'm not going to need to carry with me. And because I do that, I can carry a whole lot less weight while I'm out in the field. I don't have the rattling of my extra BBs on me. And overall, I think it is the best system to go with in my personal 
personal opinion. I've been doing this for years and it works fantastically because I have everything that I need within arm's reach. And you know, worst case scenario, if I need a tool that I'm not carrying on me, I walk five minutes back to respawn. I fix what I need to and get out into the field. That is everything that I think is necessary for load bearing. I see a lot of players out there that try to carry everything in it and the kitchen sink. However, it just slows them down and they end up having a lot of weight on them that is dead because they never use it. Now the next thing I want to discuss is uniforms. Now at most Milsim events it is green team versus tan team, however there are some exceptions like Desert Fox events for example. So if you're looking for a uniform because you know you don't really need that at pickup games, there are some really affordable options. I want to get this out of the way and say to go to a Milsim event, you don't need to empty your bank account getting this super cool kit. To go to a Milsim event, you don't need to go and shop through the Cry catalog and get the Gucciest of gear. You can go out there with some pretty basic stuff. So for a uniform, if you're looking for something super cheap, you just need something immediately, I would recommend going to a surplus store. You can find surplus woodland or tricolor desert uniforms for about 15 bucks. And don't get me wrong, they're not the best uniform out there. However, they'll work for the event. Now, if you're looking to spend a little bit more money on a uniform, I would highly recommend the True Spec uniform, both their combat shirt and their combat pants. If you'd like to learn more about those, I actually did a review of them. And you can check that out by clicking the card in the upper right hand corner. But again, you don't need to spend a ton of money on your uniform I would definitely recommend bringing two if you're doing a two-day game because you know getting around in the dirt and sweating you're not going to want to wear that uniform for a second day in a row especially if you cannot wash it so the next thing that I want to discuss is a radio. I have a lot of people that ask, well, Lane, do I need a radio to go to a Milsim event? And in my personal opinion, you do not. Now, unless the event organizer specifically tells you that you need to have a radio, I generally err on the side of caution and say if you do not feel comfortable using a radio or you do not have a lot of experience with them, I would not bring one to your first Milsim event. The reason why I say this is there are typically about 100 to 200 people on a side. And typically, they'll be on the same couple of channels, and if there's a lot of people on the line, there's not going to be any proper communication. I've been to plenty of games where if I'm not in a leadership position, I just don't carry a radio because, truthfully, I don't need it. I'm going to have other people around me who have radios, like my squad leader or other friends, and really, there's no super dis disadvantage from not having a radio, especially if you don't feel comfortable with it. But if you're at an event that requires you to bring one, obviously bring one. One, but I truthfully don't think that you need to have a radio at every single event unless you have a large group of guys you're running with with your own separate channel. That would be ideal, but you know, obviously that's not capable for everyone. Finally, there are a few things that I would like to touch up on. First off, bring some friends. Airsoft is a social hobby and it's so much more enjoyable when you're with people that you're friends with. Now, I am going to say this, there's probably going to be at least one time during this event that you and your friends are going to get separated. That is just a fact of life. If someone dies and the push keeps on moving, you're probably going to get separated for a little bit. That could be an advantage to having a radio if you have enough friends with you. However, there are events like Desert Fox events, which use your Blue Fox Tracker app, which has a chat function built right into the app so that you can chat with your teammates through your smartphone. However, even though if you bring friends, there is a chance you could get separated. Another small tip I want to mention, if you are using face protection at a Milsim event, which I always like to recommend face protection, um, just because a... $15 mesh mask is significantly less expensive than dental work. If you are going to be bringing face protection, make sure that you can take it off without taking your goggles off. When you're out in the field for 8 to 10 hours at a time, that face mask can get pretty annoying. You know, if there is a ceasefire or you're just at the fob, it's nice to take off your mask. It makes you it makes it possible to breathe a little bit easier. And overall, it's just something that I found to be super helpful. I used to go to events and I used to have my face mask underneath my helmet. However, I just found that to be really annoying and I can never take it off if I wanted to eat or sit down you know without taking my full goggles off. Talking about helmets, I don't think that they're necessary for events, but there are some AOs that I would highly recommend them. If you're in a train yard, a warehouse, anywhere with, you know, low ceilings or stuff that you could bump your head into, it might be advantageous to bring a helmet. Even a cheaper airsoft helmet is going to provide some protection against hazards on the field. However, again, while it's not necessary, it's something that I would recommend for certain AOs. There's some that I definitely don't wear helmets at that I'll just wear a ball cap. However, there are some that I make sure to 
pack a helmet with me because it would suck to get knocked in the head by a pipe or something like that. But that is some of the bare minimum knowledge that you need to know to go to your first Milsim event. I hope that today's videos helped you guys remember if you don't need it, don't pack it. Light is right. It's not a sprint. It's more of a marathon. And if you can keep yourself going at a constant speed and a constant capacity on the field, you're going to do great. Above all else, have fun. That's the most important part of Airsoft, and you're going to enjoy your first Milsim event. I want to know if you have been to a Milsim event before. The question of the day, what advice would you give newer players? And if you are a new player who's looking to go to your first Milsim event, what are some other questions that you have? Make sure to post all of that down in the comments below. I definitely love reading the discussions that you guys have down in those comments. But that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for staying until the end. If you enjoyed today's video, again, I'd love it if you joined our community by hitting that subscribe button down below and while you're at it make sure to hit that bell icon next to it for new educational airsoft videos every single friday if you'd like to help support the channel you can check out my web store at shop.thebbwarrior.com there's hoodies shirts hats all of that goes to directly help the channel and help to continue to make educational airsoft content just like today's video thank you guys very much for watching this has been lane from the bb warrior discussing the bare minimums for milsim and i'll see you all next time.